a proponent of the embodied view, I would say, because, uh, you know, in the first instance, when I described the brain as this kind of this thing that's really separate, it's hidden inside the skull. It's, you know, the brain has a computer or a detached scientist and the world is all the way out there and these clues are coming in. That's one way of thinking. But then, as you say, I guess another way of thinking is, well, really, we're a body. We're a living thing that has a brain. The brain is in service of this process, but we're, we are actually really situated in a world. We're not really detached, truly separate from the world. Um, and I think that's a, an important uh, shift in perspective that the free energy principle really provides. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so many thoughts are, are kicked off by that observation, you know, the, the circular causality, the exchange with the environment, absolutely crucial. Um, you know, the generalization of these notions beyond the brain, of course, as, as you note, um, extends to the body. So our body is also, you know, in effect, a model of our, of our lived world in a very real sense, you know, um, for you know, a trivial example would be um, the wavelength sensitivity of photoreceptors in, a, in our in our retina um, that are perfectly tuned to the wavelengths of ambient light from the sun. So you know, not only do, you know do we uh, are we optimized in a in a normative sense, um, or put it another way, um, not only do we um, optimally infer what's going on in terms of our neuronal dynamics and our brain dynamics, but our evolutionary dynamics, the evolutionary trajectories that has equipped us to sample the world in the right way, to perform those experiments with the right measurement tools, is also uh, provides you know, an essential context with, that, that enables our brains to work. And of course, our bodies are the thing that enables our brain to work. And ultimately, of course, so is the environment. And then the other thought that you, know, you, you kicked off, that you know, the... Um, you, you know, things get even more interesting um, from that sort of slower time scale, that evolutionary perspective, when you think that we actually build our own environment. So, you know, the notion of eco niche construction. So, not only are we in charge of um, deploying our sense organs to get the right kind of data, navigating around the world, looking here or looking there, or choosing which news channel to watch or which Wikipedia page uh, to, go, to go and forage on. Um, then we also um, have we, we are also in charge of of constructing the world that is supplying that information. So we build rooms with straight edges because they provide an ambiguous evidence, and you know, we we um, inhabit worlds where somebody has built traffic lights and you know that are burgeoning with deontic cues. So there's you know there's there's, there's you know, really important circular circular causality going on here. You know, multiple time scales and spatial scales um but also uh, that transcends you know what's on the inside from the outside the, the other train of thought um that question sparked was you know to bring us back to the high road understanding of the free energy principle which is um does not um rest upon um all the great thinking about sentience um for over the millennia but inherits much more from the point of view of the physicist, just asking, well, look, you know, you've got this self-organizing system. What features or what processes or what mechanics must it possess to remain in a self-organized state? And when one uh, pursues that sort of high road to the free energy principle, which would be the physics of self-organization technically to a, a non-equilibrium steady state. So this is 21st century physics, not the kind of physics you did at school, which was all about equilibria. Um, this is really asking the question, you know, if you were dealing in uh, school with um, thermodynamics, you'd be talking about idealized gas, uh, gases in a, in a heat bath or a heat reservoir. Nowadays, people want to know well, where did the heat bath come from? You know, where did, so for us, that's our sensorium. Um, you know, the, you know, how do we differentiate between the gas and the container and where, what, is, what contains the container? So all of these issues, which now, um, transcend equilibrium physics are the province of um, non-equilibrium physics so there's a lot of really interesting well, um, i was going to say complicated it's not it's fairly straightforward in mathematics that we understand about the mechanics and the dynamics of systems that have some separation in play um, and then technically you have to ask well you know how would you um, define 
the difference between, say, brain states and outside world states, or between sensory states and active states. Um, and of course, as soon as you conceive of this carving up of different states in the universe into things that are possessed by a person or a particle and things that are not, things that are on the outside, you, you're now obliged to consider um, the two, dire uh, two, two directional coupling between the inside and the outside, which brings us back again to the embodied aspect that your, our brain is embodied. Our bodies are immersed in, in a world, a world which we actually make um, and also has to transact with other embodied creatures. Uh, so all of these boundaries that define these bodies, these particles or people or plants, um, um, require you to understand how um, they are or how um, they mediate the reciprocal two-way coupling between the inside of any body or particle and the outside so that sort of you know that embodied aspect really hits you in the face when you start to look at the maths of math of this thing you know? and that's where most of the interesting um if you like derivations that's where that's where the mechanics come you know emerges from it's just having this partition into states of a thing particle plant person um, the states of nothing or everything else, and crucially, the states that separate the two. Um, so technically, these are the, the Markov boundaries or the Markov blanket that enshrouds our body or our brain and enables us to separate um, me from not me. Um, so that is the sort of the high road that you would get to um, uh, the free energy principle, which you know, in a couple of sentences just says that, well, Here's a system, it's self-organized to um, occupy a particular set of states that it could occupy, and that those states now characterize that kind of particle, creature, plant, whatever you're talking about. Um, in the presence of the separation of the states of the thing and everything else, um, there has to be a certain dynamics, a flow of states, trajectories, paths of states that the system would, would take, formally identical to things like the path integral formulation of quantum electrodynamics by um, Richard Feynman. And in fact, using exactly the same maths, you can then show, well, it must be the case that in order, order to these states to gather themselves up and live within these um, restricted um, domains, regimes of state space that mean that I am a certain temperature and you know, I, I, am, I am me, uh, it must be that the, the, the states are flowing towards the uh, the regimes that have the highest probability of being in that state, given I am me. So that's important because um, if I was a statistician analyzing my brain imaging data, that quantity or the logarithm of that quantity, the logarithm of the probability of being in the state, given I am me, is known as model evidence, where me is the model of the world. So now you have a very succinct, if somewhat poetic, description of the behaviour of any system that exists in the sense that you can separate it from its universe. Um, it must, it will always look as though it's trying to maximise the model evidence, and technically it's a Bayesian model evidence. And then you get this notion of self-evidencing, that just to exist is simply to make moves and to have dynamics that look as if they're trying to maximize the evidence for your embodied model of the environment in which you are immersed. <laughs>